What is this adorable Persian kitten doing at Topayo Vets? The kitten was first laid down and sticky tape was used to remove flea specimens for examination. We also extracted flea dirt, which is the excrement of fleas and serves as food for the developing larvae. In the meantime, the fur was parted and searched carefully for fleas. Here you can see a flea being caught with the tape. This is a Be Kind to Pets veterinary education video sponsored by Topayo Vets, where veterinary medicine and surgery come alive to vet students and pet owners. This video discusses the diagnosis and treatment of flea and mite infestations in cats. So how did this kitten's flea infestation start? Let's talk a bit about the flea life cycle. It begins as an egg, laid in bunches of 20 on cat fur. It hatches into a white-coloured worm-like larva, feeding on flea dirt. It then becomes a pupa, which can lay dormant for years until it detects favourable conditions such as the vibrations of an animal that has picked it up. The adult flea has sucking mouth parts to feed on the cat's blood. Females mate and lay eggs after a blood meal. Here we can see one of the fleas under a 10 times magnification. Upon close examination, however, numerous fur mites are seen. Even though the flea has been dead for a day, the fur mites are still alive and active and start moving when exposed to the microscope light. These mites are simple arachnids with eight legs. They live on a diet of the cat's dead skin and oil from its hair follicles. Let's now talk about the mite's life cycle. Similar to the flea, it begins as an egg, which is laid on fur or under the skin. The larva only has six legs and burrows into hair follicles to feed. After molting, it gains two more legs and is now a nymph, which molts several times into the adult. After mating, females create S-shaped burrows in the cat's skin to lay eggs. Here, you can see a close-up of the larva and the nymph and adult. Note that the larva has six legs while the nymph and adult have eight, and the adult is just slightly bigger than the nymph. There are many different types of cat mites, such as the Chelatiella mite, cat ear mite, feline scabies, and demodex mite. However, after microscopic analysis, we have determined the mites on this kitten to be the Chelatiella mite. Flea and mite infestations can cause certain notable infections and illnesses. Let's start by talking about flea-borne illnesses. The flea carries Bartonella bacteria, which causes cat scratch disease, characterized by swelling and pain. Besides affecting cats, it is also transmissible to humans, and this type of disease is termed zoonotic, meaning it can be transmitted from animals to humans. Bacterial plague, or bubonic plague, is carried by fleas on rats in poorly sanitized areas. However, when the cats consume the rats, fleas may be transmitted from the rat to the cat. These fleas carry the plague, but worse still for the cat, they carry tapeworms such as Diplidium and Tania. These cause stomach and intestinal pain as well as vomiting. Now, let's talk about mite-borne illnesses. Cat fur mites themselves are the cause of dermatitis, dandruff, allergies, and itching in cats. When transferred to humans who touch an infected cat, they can cause allergies and itching too. In addition, mites are responsible for transmitting scrub typhus between cats, rats, and humans, which causes fever, headache, stomach aches, and rashes. Both fleas and mites are very hardy and difficult to see or remove due to their small size. So how do we go about ridding the kitten of its fleas and mites? The kitten was first given a full body shave to eliminate any flea or mite hideouts. It was then discharged with anti-parasitic wash, which will soon be used to bathe the kitten and kill any remaining parasites on its body. With the proper care, it will soon be healthy once again. However, don't be too worried just yet. Cats usually do not come with serious infections of fleas or mites. In addition, pets are usually cleaned first by the seller before you buy them. Treatment of the flea and mite infestations are definitely possible and will bring your pet back to good health. Preventing infestations are better than having to cure them. Regularly wash your pets with anti-flea or anti-mite shampoo to rid them of any parasites that may have hitched a ride on them. Vacuum the carpets and floors regularly to eliminate flea and mite hideouts because these critters can be transferred to a pet that sits on a carpet. If infestations keep recurring, do visit a vet for more treatment options. By following the guidelines above, you can help to keep yourself and your cat free of flea and mite infestations and be able to hug and cuddle it without being paranoid about microscopic critters jumping onto your body. For more information, you can visit topiovets.com or contact one of the hotlines shown below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.